relational databases and their uh, application to our systems overall. And uh, some security specific stuff. I have mentioned uh, that relational databases um, are derived from, uh, at least partially, the ideas from the uh, Clark Wilson integrity model. So we'll go into some of these. Um, uh, the, um, I suppose we'll start off with referential integrity. Um, and that is for, uh, yeah, let's, let's start off with the entity integrity. Um, okay. Um, a tuple, uh, a record, a row in the table, uh, or a complete record if there's a join, um, cannot have a null value in the primary field. Um, and it cannot have a duplicate value in the primary field. It has to be a unique value uh, in the primary field. Now, null value doesn't just mean um, a string of zeros is uh, invalid. Um, uh, there may be um, systems that would do that, but I, you know, you have to have something in the primary key field. You have to populate it somehow. Uh, what the value is, uh, that depends on how you implement it, how you are going to be uh, indexing uh, your database, but um, it has to be populated. Uh, the, the danger uh, in, in physical terms, in, in you know, the basic level, uh, having, uh, you know, not generating a primary key um, for the record is that whatever was there, whatever was written onto that area of the disk before becomes the primary key and you don't know what it is. Uh, or it may be a duplicate or, you know, something, something like that. So, um, there, there has to be an entry. It has to be unique. That uh, makes sure that the row, the record, the tuple is uniquely identified. Again, from the, uh, the Clark Wilson integrity model. So we have entity integrity. This uh, entity is uniquely identifiable and uniquely identified. Um, so we, we have that uh, entity uh, identification. That is... Um, uh, the integrity of that record in terms of being able to pull it up, reference it, modify it, find it, etc. Uh, and compare it with others. Um, so, uh, then referential integrity. When we have a join, when we have joined tables, when we are using uh, a row from one table uh, and uh, joining it to a row from another table for our full record um, for any foreign key value that is the, the foreign key is what is creating the join between the tables the foreign key in one table has to refer to and has to match a populated value in the other table that's being joined so uh, so that we can uh, have a reference. We, our, our reference, our uh, connection, our join succeeds. Um, and, uh, you know, we have integrity in that record in, in terms of the, the reference to the second table or third or fourth, depending on how complicated you make your relational database. Um, again, because it is, um, the, the foreign key in one table, but the primary key in the second table, it can't have a null value. Now, 
Um, the relational database, a, a properly developed and implemented relational database should enforce both of these integrity constraints. When you create a, uh, a record in a table, that uh, the, the system should refuse to generate that. Um, you know, it should tell, you know, throw an error, you know, have a fit, warn you, if you have not populated the primary key for your entity integrity. And it should warn you if that primary key that you have populated matches another primary key uh, in the same table. Uh, another, another record, another row, another tuple. Um, if, if there is a match, you know, that's, that's forbidden. That's, uh, you know, we need to have a single record uniquely identified by a primary key. In the same way, when you are populating a field um, in a, a foreign key field in a record in one table, it should, uh, again, throw an error if it cannot find that key as a primary key in the second table. And again, you know, you may have to uh, present various um, ways of dealing with this in the uh, um, in the data entry uh, interface for um, ensuring that we have referential integrity. Um, it may it may be a drop down menu you got to pick out of this list. It may be, um, you know, it, it, there's ways and means of, of doing it, you know, uh, give you an opportunity to uh, make an entry in the second table if uh, that particular foreign key um, does not exist in, in the, the secondary table. But, um, you know, it, these, these constraints, these requirements should be enforced by the database management system if it is a properly implemented relational database management system. And if we, you know, we should be checking that the constraints are enforced. Otherwise, we don't really have a relational database management system.